how can you feed your colony rabbits net more naturally and more sustainably? Today we're going to have a look. G'day there, I'm Dana from Piwakaka Valley Homestead. Today I'm going to be talking about different ways that you can feed your rabbits more naturally, feed your rabbits more sustainably without necessarily relying solely on pellets. Pellets are a really good option for feeding rabbits. You know exactly what they're getting. You know they're getting enough nutrition. You know what percentage of protein they're getting. And it's a really good way of ensuring that you're getting your optimum growth and optimum nutrition for your rabbits. The only downside to them is that they tend to be quite expensive. So there are some ways that you can reduce your feeding costs for your rabbits as well as feeding them more naturally. In a situation where pellets are not available anymore, rabbits can actually survive really, really well on grass. However, there are some things that you can feed them that will ensure that they grow better and faster than just being solely raised on grass. Grass-raised rabbits, whilst they won't cost you much, they do take a lot longer to grow to um, processing weight. When we first got into colony raising, we were solely feeding our rabbits pellets and we worked out that that was not going to be a sustainable long-term choice for us. Uh, feed here in New Zealand is a lot more expensive than what it is in the States. Um, don't know why, but that's just the way it is. And we were getting to the point where it just wasn't worth us feeding our rabbits the pellets that we were feeding them. So I started doing some research and finding out some different ways that we can give our rabbits a high enough protein feed while it cost us a little bit less. To get good grow out rates, your rabbits will need about an 18% protein. Some feeds will only be 16% and that's tolerable, but 18% is even better. If you're seriously considering raising a sustainable meat rabbit, if you can grow something called tree lucerne, also known as tagasast or tagasasti, depending on who you're talking to, it's a tree that will grow, it grows really fast and the leaves on it are highly nutritious. The leaves of the tagasasti tree is actually considered a 100% um, food for rabbits. So that means that you can raise rabbits solely on that. It's about a 17% protein feed and they actually, the chewing on the sticks is really beneficial for them too. Rabbits teeth grow constantly so they need sticks to chew on. So having a tree like this where you can give them entire branches covered in leaves, they can eat the sticks, they can chew off the bark and they can eat the leaves as well. And you still know that you're giving them plenty of protein. Tagasas grows really well from seed and within a couple of years you can have a hedge going that you can just keep cutting for your rabbits. Another option is to feed alfalfa hay or even fresh alfalfa. In New Zealand we call that lucerne, so lucerne, alfalfa, same thing, same thing. Alfalfa can be a 100% feed for rabbits as well. It is about 17% protein which is near enough to the 18% we're aiming for and rabbits really enjoy it, it's a wee bit sweeter than a normal grassy hay. Oats, we would feed our rabbits whole oats that we got from the feed store, you can also feed them like a rolled oat, similar to like an oatmeal. I don't bother soaking it, I give it to them dry and they really enjoy those. Oats are really good for improving milk production. And your rabbits, they contain some magical thing, it works in humans as well, oats are really known to help improve uh, milk production in animals and they have a protein content of around 17% as well. Over the winter time we always gave our rabbits some sunflower seeds as well, the black oil sunflower seeds I know are really well known in the states. Here we just have, I don't know, it's only one type that you can get and they're just called sunflower seeds. They're black too I guess so they are quite high in essential oils and they help provide extra calories which help keep your rabbits nice and warm in the winter months. We would also add them as a little treat during the summer just in slightly smaller volumes because they're not the cheapest thing but they are a nice addition to their feed. Now one of the things that really was a bit of a game changer for us for feeding our rabbits naturally was I discovered that our feed supplier sold field peas like just they're like green peas that have been dried and you can buy these dried peas and dried peas have a protein content of about 23% and the rabbits love them. You can feed them whole, you can feed them crushed or what we would do would be soak them and sometimes I would usually soak a big bucket and feed them out over a few days and then by the end the ones in the bottom 
were sprouting. So I would usually soak them and then drain them and soak them and drain them um, for the first couple of days and then just leave them damp. And they would sprout quite readily and the rabbits really enjoyed them. They would seek them out, out of the feed to eat them. And they've got that really high protein content. The other thing that's really high in protein is barley fodder. On day six of fodder, barley fodder growing, the protein content of that leafy green is about 20%. So we were growing fodder for quite some time for our rabbits and they loved it. The only thing was for me was that it was taking up half my laundry so I moved outside and it did well outside but um, the birds started getting into it and then the dog decided that he, she was going to have a go at the birds that were in it and then she knocked it over and she just broke the whole thing um, and I never really got around to setting it back up but it did grow quite well for us. There are so many YouTube videos on how to grow fodder these days that you can go and do a search yourself and see what you can find. But yeah, barley fodder is a really good way of getting, you can get like six pounds of feed out of one pound of grain and it's really high, good nutrients, uh, high protein feed. So growing fodder can be a really good option if you are wanting to raise your rabbits in a more natural way. Once your rabbits are old enough to go out into chicken tractors or rabbit tractors you can drag them around and they will prefer to eat the grass than they will over the pellets so this can cut your feed bill in half just the simple move of putting your rabbits out into a tractor and moving them every day so they're getting fresh grass and then they'll eat the uh, pellets at the end of that with rabbits it's really good to make sure that they always have some good quality hay here in New Zealand we just we just call it hay, it's just good quality hay. In America I know the hay called Timothy hay is what's considered really good for rabbits. And they should always have access to some hay. The rabbits need the long, long fibres of hay and grass, those sorts of things, to help keep their gut going properly. There are lots of other foods that you can add in for your rabbits that are natural options. But they're not necessarily going to be that high protein food. So if you're going... For that fast optimal growth adding in other things like fruit and veggies will actually reduce the amount of that high protein food that they should be eating to get the high growth however if you're wanting to add some variety some extra nutrients if you've got spares in the garden pretty much anything out of your vegetable garden that you can eat your rabbits can eat as well i've got a blog post below that goes through a huge list of different foods that you can feed your rabbits that are safe for them to have I know it's quite classic that we consider that rabbits eat carrots, but actually carrots are really quite starchy and quite high in sugar. And if you're feeding your rabbits carrots on a regular basis, you'll find that they get too fat to breed properly. If you want to know more about our way of raising meat rabbits in a colony, I suggest you check out my book. I've put a link to it down below. And that's where I have put all the knowledge that I have in my head. I've put it all on paper so that somebody else can read it and absorb it. It's really easy to read and I recommend you give it a look. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, hit the like button, consider subscribing to our channel. We bring you videos twice a week on growing and preserving your own food. We'll see you in the next one.